So every day of your life, you need to wake up saying, Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Father, more grace. Over my children, more grace. Over my family, more grace. Over my business, more grace. Over my endeavors, more grace. Over my ministry, more grace. the heavens and magnify his majesty what a god what a god what a god leko praktasi bahira ro shata mana kapaya tabala da rosia latos ka praktasia what a god you are what a god you are what a god you are what a god the heavens declare your glory. The firmament show your handwork. Day unto day, night unto night, show us knowledge. There is no speech, no language, where our voice is not Somebody, can you fire in the Holy Ghost? Angels of God's Oh! 
to the heavens and magnify His name. Yeshua, Hamashiach, song prayer is the key prayer is the key Jesus the Christ, let the heavens open and let there be angelic visitation. Amen. By the spoken word from my mouth, let the heavens tear open now. Amen. Let there be the descending of the angels of God's presence. Amen. I command, let there be the strange walkings of God's power now. Amen. Holy Ghost, eat this assembly with the fullness of your glory. Amen. In the name of God the Father. Amen. In the name of God the Son. Amen. And in the name of God the Holy Ghost. Amen. For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. Amen. You can please have your seats. God bless you. I'll be teaching us this morning on how not to pray. Say to your neighbor, say, neighbor, how not to pray. Neighbor, how not to pray. You know, we just sang a song now. Prayer is the key. Prayer is what? the master key sincerely if you still believe that song let me see your hand no 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 no. i'm not talking about if you know the song i mean if you still believe the song no be honest you still believe it you know some of us you know when we sing that kind of song we'll suddenly say oh it's those children rhyme it shows you have backsliding because how can prayer being the key be a children rhyme? So who are you now? Have you not read that the Bible never talks about adults? He always talks about children in the Lord. When you want to give an example, he will say, if you are not like a child, you cannot enter the kingdom. But you know, sometimes we have outgrown God. That's where our problem is. So do you still believe prayer is actually the master key? Oh, yes. yes. Then if we believe prayer is the master key, then we must, as a matter of urgency, turn prayer to our lifestyle and praying to our what? Our lifestyle. Do you know there are people who sometimes they've prayed so much that sometimes even when you greet them, they want to respond in tongues. You think they are know that they are trying to form spiritual. No, you are the one that is carnal. Because this physical English, there's a way you will pray up to in tongues that even when you face an audience at work, you want to say praise the Lord. <laughs> because your spirit man is charged and being used to God. Are we still here? Oh, yes. yes sir. 
Now, what is prayer? Prayer is a two-way communication between humanity and divinity. Is a two-way what? Communication. Communication between who? Humanity, humanity. and what? Divinity. And divinity. Prayer is searching, investigating, and finding the perfect will of God over everything in life. Now, there are times that you have prayed, five minutes you've prayed, one hour. Those prayers cannot suffice for everything in your life. There are times that you need to search, you need to investigate. For example, you have discovered in your family that people don't live long before 40. Have you asked God? You have found out that in your family, the first person that bought a car died accident. The second one that bought a car did what? Died accident. The third one died accident. And you are the last one and you are still waiting to die before you ask God. You have four daughters, three are back home. And you don't know that you should inquire from God. So prayer is not just a system of collection. It's a system of connection with God. Are you still here? Oh, yes. yes. So what we are doing in the place of prayer, sometimes we are searching. Sometimes we are investigating. Sometimes we are finding out a matter from God. We are trying to find out. If you don't live your life this way, you will discover that there will be so many things around your life that is happening and you don't know about it. Is anybody still here? Yes. yes. Everything in life practically rests and lies on prayer. Everything practically and you saw that we looked at the story of Paul and Silas yesterday at Taylor. Were you blessed yesterday? Yes. Now we saw that they were wise people. The Bible said at midnight they prayed and they did what? And they sang because they knew that these were two cardinal focus of what? Of the Christian experience that brings results. Like I said, prayer will bring you angelic visitation. Praise will bring you the dimension of God himself. I used to hear. Yeah. So a praying Christian is a Christian that would eventually become what? A growing Christian. Now let me tell you by experience. I'll be teaching this morning by experience. There are times I've studied the Bible. I have prayed. I've prepared. I'm ready to preach. But I know there's something still missing. That I'm still looking for something in the spirit that I've not found. So I start to pray, meditate on the word, pray and pray. But in the place of prayer, sometimes that's when God throws the light of everything I've been reading since. And if you are not a praying Christian, no matter the Bible you study, no matter what you are doing, you will get to a point that you will stop growing. Because it is in prayer that we rub minds with who? With God. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. yes. Now, prayer is... God's communication network. Let me tell your neighbor, say God's communication network. God's, God's communication, communication network. network. Do you know that the telecoms company learns from God? Like I've said to you, every good thing that ever existed, existed from God. And people did what? Copied it to try to domesticate it to our physical world. You know, somebody would have been studying that how can I talk to a God that I don't see? And he's responding to me giving me information about this current world and the network people decided to come up with a phone communication network as well that you can talk to somebody that you cannot see anywhere in the world so they copied it from god and is it possible that you keep calling somebody and the person picks the call and is not talking back and you keep calling no i'm asking is it possible no so you have you not wondered that since the day you have been praying you've not heard god speak back to you are you not worried that something is wrong are you still here? Oh, yes. Are you not worried that you pray, pray, pray? You've been praying for years. You have never heard the voice of God, whether audibly or by the impression of the Spirit. Then there's something wrong with how you pray. Is anybody still here? Oh, yes. yes sir. Now, let me tell you, because lots of time when we talk about prayer like this, people think we are talking about the weakness of men. You know, when you are lazy, you don't know what to do, you are out of ideas, then the next thing to do is to do what? Is to pray no sir that's not prayer now let me explain prayer to you do you know your bible says for example that all of you little children have an angel that guard your life are you aware yes. no are you aware yes 
have you read your bible that also states that one angel slew about 125,000 people mm -hmm. in one swoop by the night are you aware oh, yes okay how many billions of people exist on this planet earth right now how many people seven point something billion let's put it at seven billion so multiply 125,000 by seven billion to know the kind of angels that are available on this planet so as we are seated here every time we ask for angelic presence you can tell how densely populated this place is in the spirit yes so when we are praying that we are not saying it to excite you what we are telling you is a reality of the spirit that if god can open your eyes you will know that this place is heavily defended so much that every day of your life as you are walking on the street as you are doing your daily chores as you pray what is happening to you is that what angelic presence more than innumerable company of angels they are doing what they are following you everywhere so we are not weak people in prayer even the strongest men the, the president of your nation does not go about 125,000 physical men do you understand what I'm talking about oh, yes. yes sir so let me tell you there is no place that is safe on earth the only place that is safe is the presence of God That's right. are you still here oh, yes, yes sir. do you know that even demons come to church are you aware yes are you aware mm -hmm. and boy here yeah, we have clipped their wings they dare not try they die you know why there are angels everywhere yes are you understanding what i'm saying yes. so that's why we are not scared whether we are at home we are to work you can't kill us whether we are at work we are anywhere we are heavily i decree over your life that the angels of your life they become active now Amen. they become active now Amen. they become active now Amen. in the name of Amen. jesus Amen now the greek word for angel is what angelos why the hebrew word is called malak but the yoruba people will call it what malaika uh, yes is angel but have you checked what angels mean the bible calls them what ministering spirits that are to minister to but if you study that word angels are what they are messengers that are supposed to care for you so when you neglect prayer because the only way angels take instruction is through what is through prayers so once you are a person that does not pray your angels become what dormant dormant it does not mean that god is weak it means that you are the one not activating what the angelic presence that has been deployed over your life are you still here yes, yes. Sir. is anybody being blessed yes so please go about everywhere of your life knowing that prayer is still the master key prayer still works prayer still changes things if there's a man to pray there is what a god, a god to god. answer where prayer does not work more prayer we walk oh, yes where more prayer does not work more more prayer we yes. walk where yes. more more prayer does not work you fire prayer down yes are you still here yes child of god prayer is a personal weapon there's nobody that has gone around in prayers and your policemen were able to arrest him even if they arrest him they could not take the weapon oh can i tell you paul and silas they were arrested but they didn't take their weapon yes. and they still shot at midnight oh, yes. Yes. they still fired mm -hmm. are you still here yes so even if the, you know the, someone told me the story of a, a man he was a pastor they arrested him and they tried to be smart with him and they put him in the cell and the pastor said okay no problem it's time to show you who i'm really i am who this person is and he looked from the door of the cell and he said i command the angel of death to visit this police station now in less than 10 minutes they brought two policemen dead shot by armed robbers the dpo said who arrested this man i will deal with you open the door and let him get out now and that was how the man went because the man was what somebody fully armed with prayer you know the gs told me a story one day an elderly man i've not even started preaching i'm just talking about prayer now told us about an elderly man that somebody one mischievous girl or so just pulled his agbada around that a greek side and was satellite or something and the man just looked at her and said your life is torn apart and the girl fell down and convulsed immediately so child of god prayer men of prayer still carry power I know you are saying the man is wicked now, Abby. 
<laughs> Don't let the man show up. <laughs> Are you still here? Yes. So how not to pray? How not to pray? The first way not to pray is don't wait for trouble to come before you start praying you know lots of us this is what we do we don't want to pray but when trouble comes you begin to tell pastor since i've joined this church people have not been doing revival pastor you don't do three days program don't you do no you are the one that has a problem we don't have a problem if you had been praying we will not need a three days program because God is working every day. Yes. Are, yes. are you still here? Oh, yes. Yes. God is working every day. Yes, the yes. day you believe is your own day. Every day is the Lord's day. Hallelujah. So don't wait till problems come before. God is not an emergency fire service. Are you still here? Yes. Jonah chapter 2 verse 1. Jonah chapter 2 verse 1. The Bible says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God. Out of the fish belly, he prayed unto the Lord his God. Out of the fish belly, he waited to be in the fish belly before he started to pray. That prayer, Jonah should have done it when the storm started. He should have prayed when the ship started shaking. That, oh God, have mercy. But he waited till he got into the belly. Why are you waiting till the storms come and eat you down? Some of you, you have discovered patterns in your family. Patterns, patterns, satanic patterns. But you still love the patterns. You are maintaining your father's demonic heritage. The things that plagued him, you want to hold on to it. What are you doing with it? You've seen the pattern. God has opened your eyes to the pattern. But your mouth is too heavy to deliver yourself. And this is why people have become victims of prophets. Because you just want somebody that can see something. Somebody that can say something. So somebody comes, I've prayed for the person. The person still asks, what do you see? What do you want me to see again? I've spoken the word of God over you. That's the highest level of prophecy. Am I against the prophetic? No. I believe strongly in the prophetic. But the word of God has been spoken over you. Prayer has been spoken over you. What are you looking for again? Is anybody still here? Yes. yes. Are you sure? Yes. yes. Sir. So don't wait till problems start. Now, Jabez, Jabez, First Chronicles chapter four, verse nine, nine and ten. The Bible says, and Jabez did what? God on the God of heaven. Verse nine says, and Jabez was more honorable than what his brethren, and his mother called his name what? Jabez, saying what? Because I bear him with what? With sorrow. sorrow. Give me verse ten now. Verse ten. And Jabez did what? Called. Now understand, in verse 9, they called him sorrow. He didn't wait till another chapter. The next verse immediately. What was Jabez doing? He was attacking that problem. Child of God, don't wait till you get deep, deep, deep into trouble before you pray. Are you still here? Yes. Jonah chapter 2 verse 7, New Living Translation. Jonah chapter 2 verse 7, New Living Translation. Let's read together like a mass choir. One, two, go. As, as, my, life as my life was, was sleeping, sleeping away, away I, I remembered, remembered the Lord. Lord and my earnest prayer went out to towards you, to you in, in your, your holy temple. temple. As what? My life was what? Sleeping, sleeping away. Child of God, why are you like brother Jonah? Why are you waiting for your life to sleep away? That's when you begin to say the church does not show love. They sh everybody should come and camp at the place where you have almost died. When you had all the time to pray. Is anybody still here? Yes. If you pray before troubles come, child of God, there is every guarantee that the trouble is not likely to show up anymore. Are you still here? Yes. Number two, how not to pray. Don't pray only because you need God to do something. You know, lots of us, this is our problem. Now, when you have a problem, you are a regular customer in church. I call you customer because you are not saved. You just come for prayer points. Looking for pastors to throw prayer points at you. And prophesy, prophesy. This week, this week, this week. But we have been talking about the Bible, you don't want to know it. So don't pray only because you need God. Jonah chapter 2, verse 2. Jonah chapter 2. Can we read together? One to go. And said, and said I did what? I, I, cried. I cried by reason of what? Of my my affliction, affliction unto the Lord. And, and he heard me out of the belly of hell, hell cried I, I and, and thou hearest my voice. Now God is merciful. He still heard Jonah. 
But child of God, the way to pray is not to cry to God because of affliction. Already stay with God in prayer so that the affliction does not even come. Are you still here? Yes. So Jonah always wanted things to go. So at this point, Jonah was trying to use God to get out of a problem. Most of us, that's what we are doing. Our Christianity is to get out of a problem. Our Christianity is to escape poverty. Our Christianity is to escape lack. Our Christianity is to even escape hell. Not that we love God. And do you think that God is not aware? He's aware. Are you a God user or a God chaser? You know, lots of us, God have stopped using us. We are the one now using God. You join the workforce in church because you know one day you will soon put a bill on them. You know, my mommy just died. I need help. You are joining church for welfare. Welfare. That's the life of some believers. You are going to church because you know that and when I die, they will bury me. Please just die and go. Don't, you don't care about what happens here. The government will be responsible. You don't need church for that. We are here for what? For the salvation. Church is what? Is a salvation embassy. So please don't use God. Let God be the one using you. So don't pray only when you need God. It's a spiritual fraud. Imagine that your child only talks to you when the child has a need. The child never calls you. The child never greets you. The child never does anything. Only the child does is, Daddy, I need 20,000 now. You, initially, you may be given. Daddy, I need 500. You give. But at a point, you would wake up and say, No, 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 no. This is getting out of hand. Where is my honor? If I be your father, that's what the Bible says. Then where is what? My honor. Are you still here? Yes. yes. Sir. The third way not to pray. Don't pray out of fear. But pray in faith. Say to your neighbor, don't pray out of fear. Don't, don't pray, pray out, out of, of fear. fear. But pray in faith. But, but pray, pray in faith. faith. Now, let me first say this to you. The name of Jesus does not respond to your emotions. It does not respond to your fear, to your ideology. It responds only to faith. Are you still here? Yes, yes. sir. It responds only to what? To faith. faith. To faith. And that's why a man can call the name of jesus and what was supposed to happen did not happen again and another one in the same situation called the name of jesus even with a louder volume and that same thing still happens to that person what's the difference is the faith in the name so lots of our prayers are prayers that are born out of fear not actually faith in god and now let me tell you prayer is predicated on the capacity of the person we are praying to not the capacity of the person that is praying lots of time the person that is praying has no capacity even if he's a pastor he has no capacity but the capacity of god is the thing that what gives us the faith the assurance to do what to come to god in prayer so don't pray out of fear pray out of faith fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by the threat of danger pain or harm these are part of the antics of the devil to get people not to pray or to get people not to get answers you are praying out of fear out of fear calling the name of jesus out of fear now what is fear are you still here yes sir. what is fear fear is false expression appearing real fear is the opposite of faith and what the devil wants to do is to get you to a place where you lose that ultimate confidence in what you are saying then the accuser of the brethren can tell god that even the person praying does not believe that you can you are like somebody that meets another person. You say, I need you to help me. But I know you will not help me. And I know you cannot help me. So what have you done eventually? If it were me, I would tell you, just shut up. Don't talk. Just go. <laughs> so you've already told God, you don't believe he has the capacity to. But to spend 10 hours praying to a God that you don't have the faith that he can do it. So at the end of the day, you discover that hours are wasted, dissipating energy, but no spiritual. I decree that receive a new baptism of faith. Amen. Amen. Receive the gift of faith. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. Second Timothy chapter one verse seven. 
The Bible says, for God hath not given us the spirit of what? Of fear, but of power and of love and of what? A sound mind. The spirit of fear, he didn't give it to us. So don't pray in fear. That thing that you are worried about, commit it in prayer to God. It will not happen. Are you still here? Yes. yes Romans chapter 8 verse 15. For ye have not received the spirit of what? Of bondage again to what? To yeah. fear. But ye have received the spirit of adoption. By whom we cry what? Abba, Abba Father. Father. Abba meaning source. The giver of life. The person from whom all things emanate and comes out from. He has not given us the spirit of, of, of bondage to fear again. So, child of God, why are you still scared? Why are you still worried? Why are you still scared? First John chapter 4, verse 18. The Bible says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casted out fear, because fear at what torments. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Fear has torment. Has anybody been under fear before? Can I see your hand? Have you checked? If you didn't raise up your hand, you're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> because even last week, you still got, you were scared whether you would go to hell. You were still worried. Or does it not happen to you that at some point you just worry that if Christ comes now, will I make it? It's a form of fear. But if you've experienced fear before, let me see your hand. Let me now say protracted fear. Maybe two days, three days. Not just an incident. Maybe two, three days. Let me see your hand if you've been afraid. Did you check your BP after that? <laughs> Did you sleep well? No. But the Bible came before that incident. So how did the Bible know that fear has torment? Mm. Mm. And God does not want you to pray in that situation. Because all the things you will be saying, in fact, you will be talking to God as though God is the problem. Yes. When you are in fear, you can say anything. You can misbehave once you are under fear. Are you still here? Yes. Yes. So Psalm 34 verse 4. Let's read what the Bible says. It says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from what? All my fears. I sought the Lord. How did the psalmist seek the Lord? In what? In prayer. Yeah. He tells me that prayer and praying is the antidote to what? To fear. So if you are a fearful person, do what? Pray. If you are a timid person, do what? Pray. pray. If you are shy, do what? Pray. pray. We need to pray before we look at your face. Even you know your face is strong. <laughs> Even you, you know. So if we don't pray before we come here, we will get here and miss all our scriptures. Are you still here? Yes. yes now, Job chapter 3 verse 25. This one, we must read it together. And I want you to read it loudly. One, two, go. For, for, the the things, for the thing which was greatly Job feared. greatly feared is come, come upon who? Me. Upon Job. And that which Job was afraid is come unto who? Job. Unto Job, not me. So this tells us, yes, yes, not me. So this tells us that what? Fear has the capacity to attract. Faith also has the capacity to do what? To attract. To attract. Yes. So fear and faith both are magnets. So it depends on the side of what? Of life that you are operating from. If you are operating from the side of fear, be rest assured that suddenly evil will come near you. Yes. If you are praying from the side of faith, be rest assured that suddenly God will show up. So, child of God, be mindful of what comes into your spirit, whether fear or faith. They are both what? Magnets. They do what? They attract. Somebody say, I destroy the spirit of fear. I destroy the spirit of fear. Over my life. Over my life. Over my family. Over my family. Can you pray that in 30 seconds? I destroy the spirit of fear. Over my life. Over my family. I destroy the spirit of fear. Over my life. I destroy the spirit of fear. Over my life. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' victorious name we have prayed. Amen. How many have we told you now? 
how many okay so the fourth one don't pray in a selfish manner help me say to your neighbor don't pray in a selfish manner don't, don't pray, pray in, in a selfish, selfish manner. manner you know how selfish christians pray me god me my family my children my if my is not there they can't pray my church my 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 but there's a level you get to in this kingdom that you stop praying like that now how god really wants you to pray he puts it in matthew chapter 6 verse 10. the bible says what thy kingdom come thy what will be done on earth as it is what Amen. done so what god actually expects of you as a praying believer first is to what to be an intercessor are you still here yes, yes sir what god is wanting to do with your life is not to get you to the point where you can pray to receive more things no to get you to a place where you become what an intercessor for nations now the mommy mommy was leading us in prayer this morning jesus give us more souls your, your voice was down but if we turn it to warfare prayer now every power from my mother sir <laughs> anyone that does not want me to sit tomorrow somebody shall die by fire uh -huh. <laughs> but jesus give us more souls souls are perishing it does not matter to you and after a while god stops answering your prayers why because he has looked at you you've been five years in the kingdom and you have still not learned how to pray that you pray what thy kingdom come how many days have you stayed interceding for your church how many days have you stayed interceding for your pastor how many days have you seen you know everybody that is a sinner in church but you have never at any point in time taken them as what your prayer project but you know them that one Kolemeke. <laughs> And you, spiritual investigator, you are the one that reveals sins to God. Because God is not aware. You are the one that takes sins to God. God, I've gathered more list of sins now. I have those brothers that sin. Okay, now that you know, what have you done about it? Thy kingdom, what? Come. The Bible says it's not the will of God for anyone to do what? So to perish. perish. So you, why are you rejoicing when you see souls that are not saved? Why are you at ease in Zion? The Bible says what? Woe unto them that what? Are at ease in Zion. The church of today is at ease in Zion. Tell people today that we want to go for evangelism. No, everybody's asleep. But let me tell you, we will go. We are going for evangelism. Yes, sir. We are going for evangelism. Because we cannot allow the Christ to come and meet the church this way. Are you still here? Yes, yes, sir. Because God will require the blood of all these people that we are passing by, that we are not praying for, and we are not witnessing to. God will require their blood from our head. The job of the man on the watchtower is to do what? To sound the alarm. His job is not to save the people. His job is to do what? To sound the alarm. This was the teaching of the GS many years ago. All your own is to do what? To intercede and to what? To go out to win the lost. So you need to take that your brother that is not saved as a prayer project. That your uncle that is not saved. You need to take them as what? A prayer, prayer project. Don't be a give me Christian. Those are kindergartens in the kingdom. It doesn't matter the number of years you have stayed. You are still a kindergarten. Are you still here? Yes, yes. sir. Maybe we'll talk about intercession next week. Are you still here? Yes. yes, sir. Don't complain in prayer. Just pray. Look to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, don't complain in prayer. Just neighbor, pray. Neighbor, don't, don't complain, complain in, in prayer. prayer. Just what? Just pray. Just pray. pray. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14. Philippians chapter 2 verse 14. Let's read together one to go. Do, Do all things, things what? Without, murmurings. without what? Murmurings and disputings. Philippians 2 verse 14. Do all without things without what? Without complaining, complaining and, and what? Arguing. And arguing. The New Living Translation says, Do everything without what complaining and arguing king james version do all things without murmurings and disputings do you know
know some of us what we do is not prayer we just complain to god god five years i've been married no child god i've been serving you all my life and look at what has happened to me god i have been doing this and this has not happened god i have and god is still waiting for your prayer god is still saying pray it's like your child that comes to you daddy says you have given birth to me you've not bought shoe you've not bought this you've not bought this you didn't do this you didn't do this and it goes so what are you supposed to do about that the bible says make your request so do you know there are times we spend hours but god has still not had any prayer because all you did was to transfer your aggression to god to transfer all your emotions to god but you never really prayed child of god don't be in the class of those that only complain to god god you did not do this god you did not those things are not prayers quit the complaint and just do what pray it is not working pray it is working pray it is not going as planned pray leave the complaint are you still here oh, yes the sixth one don't pray to change god this is a difficult one you know lots of times we gather god change your mind god does god really change his mind no i'm asking does god really change his mind are you sure but my bible tells me jesus christ the same yesterday today, today and can i tell you god does not actually change his mind it's just that when you pray your spirit is now aligned to be able to see another window of grace it's not that he changed his mind that if god is changing his mind then it won't be god if god is changing his mind then you will be able to control him do you know the number of billions of people that are asking him to change his mind even god will get confused he has made up his mind from the foundation of earth over every matter so but as you pray you begin to see windows of opportunity to obtain mercy to obtain grace you keep pressing you still see that ah there's still an opportunity for mercy here you are pressed he's not changing his mind it's just that prayer is the one that is changing you that's right mm. so when we pray we are not changing god we that's cannot what we are doing is we are changing our own spirit and our own self to be able to do what to align with the will of god If somebody dies for example and god already allows you know that it's not time for that person to die maybe an enemy had done this you can raise the person up you can raise the person back up but there's no amount of prayer when it's god's time for that person that'll bring that person back are you understanding what i'm saying oh, yes. yes but if you can discern as you are praying that no this is not god's time you can actually do what effect a return so prayer will never change god malachi 3 verse 6 i am the lord i change it not hebrews 3 13 verse 8 jesus christ the same yesterday today and forever so child of god stop thinking about changing god if you want your answer fast begin to align with his will pray for the grace to align with his will you are like somebody that god has designed or destined that you will preach the gospel sir run even into Boko Haram's den and they are shooting gun you won't die you will still preach that gospel god will do everything to preserve you because that is his perfect will for your life are you still there yes, yes. sir you don't agree with that last point abby and boys the bible you can't change god you can't change god don't pray in sin this is a major one help me tell your neighbor say neighbor neighbor don't pray in sin don't, don't pray, pray in sin. sin you know we live in a generation where sin is no more discussed you know people tell you sin is just a transgression it's just a mere mistake it's an error you know it's just like you just you deviated no sir you didn't deviate you sinned sin is what a sin any day it does not matter who is sinning the sin it is a sin psalm 66 verse 18 
the bible says if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not do what are you still here oh, yes if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not do what will not hear me did you read this scripture well the lord will not do what hear me did he say the lord will stop you from praying no he will not just do what not just so this accounts for why many people don't have answers to prayers you know why you are living in sin and you are keep you are praying you are praying you are praying god won't stop you from praying he will not just hear so they've been telling you quit this sin live a holy life so that god can answer your prayer you are holding on to the sin and you are holding on to god god will not respond in that state are you still here yes, yes proverbs chapter 15 verse 8 the sacrifice of a we of the wicked is an abomination to the lord but the prayer of the upright is his what is his delight right. who is a wicked person a wicked person is the person that has refused to accept the sacrifice of christ on the cross are you still here yes, yes sir isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 the bible says but your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid what is his, his face? face from you that he will not do what he will not hear so if you read bible the bible will not the god will not stop you from praying it's just that he will not do what he will not hear it's your sins that have separated you so child of god if you need 100 percent prayers to be answered live a 100 percent holy life you know there's no 99.9 .9 holiness is either you are holy or you are what unholy and there's nothing like you are more holy mm -mm. holiness is a standard you are holy or you are not holy are you still here yes. romans chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 romans chapter 6 verse 1 and 2 what shall we say then shall we continue what in sin that grace may what abound the second verse tells you what god thinks about sin what does he say god for even god forbids that what we how shall we that are dead to what to sin live any longer daring child of god the devil is not your problem sin is your problem because at the mention of the name of jesus the bible says what every new must what must bow so even demons still bow to that name but just shouting jesus does not take away the sin you must be ready to surrender the sin and do what receive the life of christ so you must forsake sin to have answered prayers are we still here yes, yes. don't report others in prayer you know some of us are this petty even spiritually god 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 i know i'm not supposed to say this but i will tell you you are very partial sister toby does not pray i'm the head of prayer band <laughs> and look at my life that's not prayer that's a protest that's not prayer look at brother this is a chronic unbeliever and he's been buying cars god did we offend you or are you saying we should backslide those things are not prayers you are just doing what reporting people to god god is aware that those people exist and if you spend all your life praying that way god is not obli obliged to do what to respond and that's what many believers do they are jealous people they are people that don't care all they do is pretend with the name of jesus but if you know the jealousy in their hearts you came to dance somebody sing hallelujah jehovah jare has done me well that's another prayer for him they are even using their testimony to mock us and the person was just being what grateful to god instead of you to just do what just pray and let me tell you if god has done something for somebody that seemingly appears that does not serve god the way you do you should rejoice smart people will tell god god if you can do this for an unbeliever then i know the kind of things you can do for me mm. yes, yes yes if you can build a house for somebody that is not saved then my mansion is coming Hallelujah. Yes. that is faith talk yes. that's faith talk yes. not going about being petty in the spirit petty in the flesh you just 
at the end of the day waste all your energy and no results i decree in the name of jesus every demon that has corrupted your prayer life they catch fire now in the name of jesus don't blackmail god in prayer it is spiritual foolishness you know there are people that will say god you have three more months after three months even you said go no say i've been sin. let me tell you three years god has not done it god wants to see that your worst whether you can unseat him whether you voted for him whether you were the one that put him there god wants to see so after your ultimatum has expired the devil has dealt with you properly then you will humble yourself like the prodigal son and will say my father i have sinned against you. and god will say now you are talking you can't blackmail god you know these are the nonsense prayers and things you because you do it to men I, or your husband or your wife i'll pack out of this house now we beg you i don't you think you can do that with god he was not elected is god by himself that's right the bible says he kill it and he make it alive blessed be the name of the lord after killing blessed be the name of the lord yes. yes have you heard that he killed and they arrested him no. he will kill the person looking for him again are you still there yes, yes sir so please stop body i will not serve god again i will leave church i will you are compounding your problems you know have you not found believers this brother and this sister will argue now over business the next thing is i'm leaving the church please how did church concern both of you's financial dealings hmm? the next thing now you know people think when they leave church they have let the pastor will now begin to suffer because they have left church i'm sorry for you i'm sorry for you it's like a student that refused to go to school and say the teacher will cry i didn't come to school again ah lie about your children that they want to teach have you seen the field the bible said the field are ripe for harvest if you don't come we'll go and do evangelism again are you still here yes sir. you are not the only one that is ripe for salvation there are many more to be saved so please don't pray also don't vow in prayers and forget to redeem them you know there are people that think they cannot you know this brain eh, sometimes we are too nigerian for god you know because your pastor has taught you about the place of vow and god so you don't wake up god if you do it i will build you a sanctuary <laughs> god has done it 10 years ago brother where's the sanctuary god will come for you because you are not smarter than god now let me tell you what a vow is is a covenant it's not a bribe Praying with to God with a vow is entering into covenant. It's not a bribe. Your vow will not change God. Now, for example, you want to go and do arm robbery. And you come and vow to God that God, when I come back, I, God will let them kill you there. <laughs> because that vow is not going to make God support what is not going to, that is not consistent with his character. Are you still here? Oh, yes. yes so vow does not change god, but it brings you into spiritual partnership with god now god looks at it that if you can sacrifice this much then i can esteem what i want to do so what vow does is to add speed to your prayers yes. it's not that it changes god are you still here yes, yes sir. are you sure you are still oh, here yes ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4 to 6. let's read it quickly ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 4 to 6 let's read together one to go when, when thou, thou does what vow a vow unto god defer not to pay it for he hath no pleasure in what in fools pay that which thou has done what some of you are listening i'll read verse five hold on some of you are listening to me right now your vow was 10 years ago your vow was five years ago you know how this one that the church will say and hey, we need money to raise this and you just come and motivate the pastor <laughs> you know that one just encourage the pastor 200k and after that you have disappeared god will look for you you lied to god not to the pastor are you still here yes number five says what better is it that thou shouldest not vow than thou shouldest vow and not what pay verse six says suffer what 
not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to do what to sin neither say thou before the angel that it was what an error wherefore should god be angry at thy voice and destroy the work of what thy hands so we didn't write the bible if you have a problem with this look for god what i just read if you have a problem with it look for god I, i'm just reading to you so please when you want to vow please consider it very well you don't get emotional about vow because god will look for you you know the jesus was telling us a story one time back that somebody wanted to die abi daddy somebody wanted to die on the, the hospital and they called the gs to come and pray and they went with some of the pastors and they got there and the gs wanted to pray and the pastor started rolling on the floor god if you do this i will roll seven times i will do this gs said hold on hold on marcus Hille, be writing it down so that God will not come for both of us after this prayer. You are, you, are, you, are, you are motivating God now. I will roll. I will shout. I will do this. But you, after God has done, you just move on. But the angel of God will still slap that mouth. Because the Bible tells us that he will come after you. So when you want to vow, don't put it in your head. Commit it to a book. Write it down. Are you still here? Oh, yes. Don't commit it to your head. Commit it where? to a book write it down so that you do not forget are you still here yes. yes so i'll tell you the last one and i will leave you for this week don't lose hope even if you lose faith are you still here yes yes, yes. do you know what faith is faith is that god can do it now faith is for now now faith is the substance now faith is what for now hope is for what the future that god so if your faith has been battered that you don't believe god can do it now yes no problem but still have the hope that one day he will do what he will do it my hope is built on nothing else than jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but all lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the sole, lead the rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. So, child of God, if God has not done it now, don't lose hope. He will still do it. You didn't hear me. I said he will still do it. Amen. If you do not have the faith today, ensure that you don't lose hope. Oh, yes. You know, one of the signs that you have lost hope is when you stop praying. One of the signs that you have lost hope is when you stop coming to church. One of the signs that you have lost hope is when you stop becoming a worker in church. Is a sign that you have lost hope. And at the point where you lose hope, then there is no more turning back. There's no help anymore. So if you lose faith, don't lose what? Hope. Let me preach to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, if you lose faith, don't lose hope. Neighbor, neighbor if, if you lose, lose faith, faith, don't lose hope. Ah, if your neighbor is sleeping, scream it into his ear. Neighbor, neighbor if you lose faith, faith, don't lose hope. If you lose faith, don't do what? Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. I decree over your life by the spirit of the prophets that this week I fast forward you into your inheritance. I fast forward you into your glory. I fast forward you into your destiny. I fast forward you into breakthroughs. I fast forward into dimensions of glory. This week your heaven is open. This week you triumph on every side. This week demons are crumbling for your sake. Anywhere you go to heaven is rising to your defense. I decree that the angels of God's presence, they are delivering you from every evil. Be delivered now. Be set free now. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. And in the name of God the Holy Ghost. God bless you. Amen.